everyone. Welcome to my channel. Um, Kim Can't Stop Crafting. Hey, I have a mini album that I want to share with you uh, using the blue fern paper called Garden Life. So I'll show you the book and the pages and then if you're interested following the project share will be the tutorial for the pages and how I put it together. Um, this book is a little bit different size than what I normally make. It's six and a half across and 11 inches tall. And so it was uh, kind of different for me to do a book that, that was that that was that tall. So um, let me kind of go through it with you. And uh, like I said, if you're interested, there will be a tutorial on the page, uh, the four different page styles. On the front, most of the things here are from the store Country Craft Creations, um, except for a few things that I had in my stash. Um, this paper is beautiful. Uh, the flowers, the thickness of the paper is awesome. It's awesome, but it's also not a paper you want to um, like wrap your cover with because it, it will crack. It's, it's a thick paper and so it's too hard to, to bend it over your uh, chipboard pieces. So anyway, um, I had a butterfly, um, it was a pin and I took off the back and I uh, glued that on and I had some uh, bling that I added, but this is the Blue Fern Fairy and I used the um, blue fern embossing powder and I thought it was just going to be pink and sparkles but it's actually kind of a pink and yellow and so I was surprised when I got the results of that but I think it looks good with the the paper line it's very sparkly but I like the two shades the pink and the yellow um, these flowers these roses the two peach the two pink and the white are from Blue Fern. I had some pink doilies in my stash, that's the background, and then I had a spray of some flowers and some crystals here plugged in. I don't know if you can see this, I have some crystals here and here, or baubles, whatever you want to call them, filled in with some of my roses, and so there is the cover. Um, the spine, you know what, I don't remember. I don't remember if I went two and a half or three or what I did. Let me check. Uh, it looks like two and three fourths, to be real honest. Two and three fourths, that's kind of a weird one for me. Um, but on this, I just put some of the chipboard pieces on. And that's what I did for the spine. And the back is plain. It's hard to tell with the coloring, but this is a real, it's a pink color. It looks really washed out on the camera, but it's pink with some hint of like yellowy orange. The closure, I just did a seam binding closure. And so I'll go through the pages real quick. I don't want to bore you, um, but I tried something different. I had a doily and I cut it and so I just made it into a pocket. And so there's nothing in there right now. But I thought that would be good to store some things if you have um, a pamphlet or a really large picture or something. And so I just glued along the outside edges. So I kind of liked that look. And it kind of reminded me of a fence. So, uh, so this is a split hinge. So there's a hinge at the top and a hinge at the bottom. And each hinge is about four and seven eighths inches long because the pages are five inches uh, tall. Um, so the pages are five inches tall and six inches across. So there's two separate spines. So what's nice about that is you can get a different look depending on what page you have open at the same time. So you can get a different look just by turning the pages. Um, okay, all right. So um, there are some fold outs on this. Uh, I'm gonna do the top first. And so this opens and then you have a flap that opens up and a flap that opens down. Okay, did not embellish on the inside so that it would lay flat. These are also open on the sides, but I did not put any um, tags in there or anything yet. Uh, I'm pretty, I used a lot of paper on this one, pretty much the whole um, paper pack or collection. So uh, I think there's enough room for my pictures that I don't need the tags in there anyway, but. So if you turn the page, this is a double pocket page. So you can put something in this pocket or in this pocket. This page, you untie it. I just uh, closed it with seam binding. And to open it, you're just going to take the seam binding out of one hole 
and it opens and then this flips up now when I did this page design on the bottom I didn't have it flip up I had it flip down okay and then you would just put this back through the hole and tie it for your closure and I'll tie it later on this page this is a belly band so you can put something in there um, let's see so you can st t stick something back there um, and then it flips up and then you have um, this beautiful pic. I love this. I'm going to get it closer so you can see. Look how beautiful that paper is. So I, didn't, I wanted that to be a focal point and didn't want to cover that up at all. On this page, it's a pocket and then it opens. Okay. And this side actually has a double. There's two pages. Just one on the right but two on the left. And it's magnetically closed. On the back is an accordion pocket that's closed with a magnet and I just stuck a couple of the cut aparts in there from the collection but it has some give and the last page on the top opens to the right and then it flips up and flips down so there was a style like that earlier on the top too if I add anything to the inside, it was usually just a flat, like a saying, okay? So that was the top layer. Let me show you the bottom layer. You're going to see that it's the same page styles. There might be one different page style, but um, here's blue um, belly band. This flips up, and then you have this for a picture. On the back, you open the doors. I just popped that up on some dimensionals and added a little flower there in the corner and then this one comes down so it was just the opposite of the other one and I'll just stick this in here real quick I'm going to tie that later this is a pocket right here and then it opens as the double pages on the left here's another accordion pocket that's magnetically closed and has some give just stuck, isn't that cute? I just stuck that in there and then here's this page style that wasn't at the top I meant to do one on the top and one at the bottom but then when I glued them in eh, it didn't work out that way so um, here is a fold out page Okay, and then this is for just a picture and I have a magnet here and on the back there is another closure but this time it opens up and down uh, get my fingers out there and I'll just take it out of one and then when you open it uh, up and down there is a pocket Okay, and then we have that same uh, page style you just saw, where it fold, folds out, and then this one, I love this, can you see that? It's like a little fence and I just added some flowers on there, a little gate, and, oh good, the air conditioner turned off. And then um, you have the pocket, and it folds, uh, goes up and down. Okay. And then I did the same thing on the back cover that I did on the front, and I just took a doily and glued it on the three sides to make a pocket. And I'm going to stick this in here. Okay. So uh, that is my garden life book. And um, like I said, it's the cover is six and a half by eleven. Quite a few places for pictures. Um, not a hard book to make at all. Uh, I like that it was two separate hinges. So if you're interested, keep watching, and you will have a tutorial on the, how to make the four styles of pages. And um, 
I talk a little bit about the hinges. I don't show you exactly how to do everything with the hinges. Um, I will link another video uh, to Tammy Merrill's channel that she does a great tutorial for hinges. So thank you for tuning in. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. Uh, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel so uh, you can get the um, videos as I upload them. And I am hoping that you all have a wonderful day. Thank you. To make the pages of the um, book that we're going to go through, um, it has eight pages, four on the top and four on the bottom. And so there's four different page styles. So I have already made one and I will show you how to make um, the same one. Um, so I'll show you what it looks like when I get to the individual pages. But first we need to put together the base page. And so because there's eight pages, you are going to need to cut eight uh, pieces of paper that are six by six. And you are going to score at one half and five and a half on one side. Okay. You're going to score those. And then you're going to put, I used uh, score tape on the sides. Okay. So you just do that on one side. So that's going to be um, our page. They end up being about um, six by five and a half, I think. Okay. So six by six. And on one of those sides, score at one half and five and a half. And do that eight times for all of your pages. And then the other thing you need for the base page is um, a five by six piece of paper. And so you'll need eight of those also. So we're going to start with um, the first page style. So I'm going to need one of my five by sixes and one of my uh, six by sixes. So I've already got my score tape and I'm going to be placing this on top of this to make the base. And I am trying to get better about just taking a little bit of the score tape off before I lay it down so that if I need to adjust it's a little bit easier. Sometimes I get too much in a hurry and don't do it that way. So I want to line it up at the bottom and I want to make sure that the sides are lined up and the top. And I'm just going to look to see that looks pretty good. So I'm just going to pull off the rest of the score tape. Okay. And there's our base page. So it has an opening. Uh, one of those sides will go into the hinge. Okay. So let's take a look at the first style that we're going to do. This will be page one. And oh, I put a clip on it and it kind of indented the paper. Okay. So let me take a look at my notes here, the front. Okay. You can see where it indented a little bit. So the first page is going to have a belly band and a flap on one side. And then when you turn it over, it's going to have the double doors and it will have a flap going down. However, I'm going to be doing the top um, pages. So instead of having a flap going down, I'm going to have a flap that goes up. Okay, because this is the one I already made for the bottom. So let's go ahead and start with this. Um, here are the measurements. I don't have them written down for you to see, so you'll have to listen carefully. Um, you're going to need a four by five and a half inch piece, and that's going to be your flap, four by five and a half. And so because you're making two of these, you're going to end up, you're going to want to cut two. Um, and then the belly band is one and a half by six. Okay. So on the four, man, I wish that wouldn't have indented so bad. On the four by five and a half inch piece, on the five and a half inch side, you're going to score it one half. So it's five across, five and a half across. Okay. And I did round my corners. So if you want to do that. And that's going to be placed in the center of our base page. Um, I am going to go ahead and attach my belly band before I do that. And the belly band, remember, was one and a half by six. And you score at a half inch on one end. Then I flipped it and I did a half inch. So half inch on each side. Now I'm going to be using glitter glue to attach these. I think I need to clean my glue, uh, glue bottle lid, but we're going to make it work for right now. So I'm going to attach the belly band first and I want to center it. 
So I'm just going to put some glue on that half inch on each side. I'm just going to eyeball it. If eyeballing doesn't work for you, go ahead and measure it. And I just want to make sure it's even on the top and the bottom. Okay. And make sure that I give it enough time to dry. It does dry very quickly. Okay. Let's get our base page with the openings to the left and to the right. And we're going to center this on our page. So our pages are six inches across. So you want this to center at three inches if you want to be meticulous about it. I'm going to eyeball it. So I'm going to put my glue on my one half inch piece here. I'm going to center it. Try to make it even, have the same amount of space on each side. There's no overhang at the bottom. Press, and then I'm going to go ahead and lift it and just make sure there's no extra glue and there's not. And that's all I did for the first page. Once you add your decorative paper, it makes a world of difference. So that's easy. A flap and a belly band. Okay. I'm going to turn this paper over and the base page, and now that's our back. And for the back, let's do our flap first. And the flap is going to be five and a half by five and seven eighths. Five and a half by five and seven eighths. Um, you're going to place the five and a half inch side on your scoreboard and score it one half. And I did round my corners. Now, you're going to do one on the bottom, and then when you make your other page, you're going to do one at the top. So I'm ready to do the one at the top. So I am going to put adhesive with my glue, my glitter glue, on the one half inch fold. And I'm just going to line it up with the top. And it fits perfectly. No overhang on the bottom or the sides. Make sure it's down real good. You can use your bone folder. I really like using this little one, like this little spatula end. Um, I have the longer ones too, but for some reason I've really gotten attached to this one, and that's the Teflon one. Okay. So I'm going to lift this up. And now I'm going to attach the doors. Now the reason why I punched my holes ahead of time is to remind me to punch holes because I'm really bad about that. Um, so you don't have to punch these holes yet. That, not until you um, put your decorative paper on there. So let me give you the measurements for these. Um, these are three and a half by five and you need two of them for each page. So if you're making two pages, you're going to need a total of four. So these are three and a half by five. Okay. And I rounded my corners. Oh, I scored it one half. I'm sorry if I didn't say that. Three and a half goes at the top of your scoreboard. Score it one half. I mitered the corners like that, just to take out some of the bulk. And I did that on both of them. Okay, three and a half by five. Score it one half. And now we're going to attach one on each side. And I'm going to put my art glitter glue let's see I want that on the inside I'm going to turn this so I can put it on easier and I want it right up against the edge See, that will be down and this will be in on top of it. And then I'm going to turn it around and do the other door. I like doing books that have a lot of, well, I wouldn't say a lot, a medium amount of flips and doors and all that kind of stuff. But usually when I take pictures, I don't have enough pictures 
to fill a book that has a ton of those flaps. I guess I could do writing, you know, like journaling and stuff, but I'm, I'm bad about that. So I like to kind of have a medium amount of flips and folds and pockets and all that kind of stuff. So, all right. So mine again has the flap at the top because this is my top page. Yours, will, you'll have one on the top and then the next one you make have the flap on the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and turn, pull that in and there are my doors. Okay, we'll eventually cover it with paper and put, um, not brads, the um, grommets, is that what you call them? I don't remember. And then we'll put ribbon through it. Okay, so there's page style one and you'll need two of those. Okay, two of them, one with the flap up, one with the flap down. We are ready for page style two. So let me get my materials out here. And page style two, Let's see, um, the front has a flap and a pocket. Okay, so this is page style two, where you open it, it, there's a pocket here, you open it up, and you have one that opens on each side, okay? So, uh, the back is an accordion pocket with a uh, top, like an envelope. So let's get started on that page. You are going to need a base. So we're going to go ahead and again, take one of our six by six pieces that we scored at one half and five and a half. After you score it, burnish it and add your score tape. And then I have my five by six paper to put on top. I'm gonna go ahead and just remove a little corner to make sure I can line it up the way I like it. On fingernails, get it. There we go. And I'll do this side too. I'm going to have a. I should get my pick thing out. Okay. And I'm going to place this on top, lining it up, making sure it gets the bottom and the sides and the top lined up. adhesive off. Ouch. What did I do? That really hurt. And this one. Now I can see just a little tiny piece there and that's going to drive me crazy so I'm going to trim that up. There we go. Okay so here's our second base page with our opening to the left and to the right. So let me find the pieces for this one. Um. I think this, these are it. Let me just check that I have the right pieces. Hold on. So this one, yep, that's the same. And yep, I've got the right pieces. Okay. Sorry, I should turn off my phone. Um, so here's what you're going to need for the um, front. You are going to need six. Is that right? Six. Hold on. Why six? Hold on. One, two. Oh, I forgot. This one opens twice. <laughs> That's why. Okay. Sorry, I made those a couple days ago and I forgot. So you're gonna need three for each page. So these flaps uh, measure four by four and a half by five four and a half by five. You need three of them for each of your pages. So one on the top, one at the bottom. So you're going to end up needing six of these. Four and a half by five. On the four and a half inch side, please score it one half. And I did round my corners and you're going to do that with all three. Score it a half and round your corners if you want. Okay. And the other piece you're going to need for this front page is the pocket and that's two and a half by five two and a half by five and you are going to 
uh, score at one half on three sides. One of the long sides will not be scored. Okay. After you score it and you've burnished it, I did cut out the corners to take out the bulk. Okay, so I cut out that little square at an angle. And why don't we go ahead and trim up the top too, just by cutting an angle up to the score line. Okay, so this two and a half by five inch piece that you scored at one half on each side is gonna be your pocket. After you score and you burnish, we're gonna end up folding those and that's gonna be our pocket. And on the four and a half by five pieces, we scored it one half, or yeah, one half on all of them. And we did that to all three. So let's put it together. And I'm going to do the left hand side first. And that's the two pages, the two flips that go over here. So I'm going to put glue on the half inch. And I'm going to line it up on the left hand, or yeah, left hand side. Press down. I'm going to open, make sure I don't have excess glue. Okay. And then I'm going to put another flap right on top of that. So I'll put my glue on. I'm going to turn this sideways. It's easier for me. I'll line it up right on top of there. Make sure it covers up that other piece equally. I like it. Press down. I'm going to open it up. Make sure that it's down real good. No excess glue to wipe off. Okay. There's the left hand side. On the right hand side, we're going to have one flap and the pocket on that flap. So I'm going to go ahead and put the pocket on the page. It doesn't Because I rounded my corners, I did not um, put the pocket down at the bottom. So if you're not rounding your corners, you can put it at the bottom if you want. Um, I'm scooting mine up a little bit. Okay, so the half inch is on the right. I'm going to put glue on the half inch folds. Okay, and I stick the two sides in first and then the bottom flap up. And let me turn that. And I'm going to place it uh, about three fourths to a fourth of a uh, three fourths to an inch up from the bottom. And again, you don't have to do that if you're not rounding your corners. Okay, so then we have a pocket. And now we're going to take this flap and adhere it on the right hand side. I'm going, to, I'm going to work on the right, but I'm going to turn it sideways for me. And put your glue on or your score tape, whatever you're using, or red line tape. I used to use the red line, but then I got tired of cutting it all the time. So then I went to score tape. And then I now I use a combination of the score tape and the glitter glue. Line it up at the end. Make sure it lines up nice and neat. Open it up. Make sure there's no excess glue and that it's down real good. And there is the front page of page two. Now you, uh, you will need to think of how you want this to stay closed. If you'd like it to be open, that's fine. I'm going to be putting a magnet on the right hand flap and then the um, one on the, on the left hand so that it'll stay closed. Let's turn it over and do the back. The back is an accordion pocket. Okay, so for that, you're gonna need um, a piece that's four by nine, four inches by nine inches, four by nine. And the other piece you're going to need for the top of the pocket is, uh, three by six, three by six. Okay. 
On the three by six piece, put the three inch side on your scoreboard at the top, three inches going across, and then score at one half. And then I rounded the corners. Okay, that's gonna be the top of our little envelope or pocket on the back. Um, for your four by nine piece, you are going to do some scoring so that it is a pocket that gives that has some depth so you can put maybe a little bit thicker items inside. So here's how you're going to score that. Place this on the nine inch side of your scoreboard. So the nine inches across the top and you're going to make three score marks. One at one half, one inch, and one and a half. Score at one half, one and one and a half inches. Then turn your paper around and you're going to do the same thing to the other side. So it's still nine inches across on your scoreboard. Score at one half, one inch, and one and a half. Turn your paper so that the four inches is at the top of your scoreboard and score at one half. Okay. You're going to want to burnish those score lines. So score. Now on this one, I scored a little, um, I burnish it a little bit different. I do the first one going to the back of the pocket and fold it. Then I do the next one, I turn it upside down and I burnish that one so that it's facing the, on the front. And then I go back to the back and do the third one. So what I mean by that is so that you have that up, down, up. Okay, so fold on your score line, flip it over, score the, uh, burnish the second one, turn it back over, do the third one. Now you're going to also um, want to take a look to make sure that you don't see those accordions, the sides, when you fold it in. So you might have to do some adjusting in your burnishing to make sure that you can't see something sticking out the side. Okay, we have some cutting to do. So I'm gonna open this up a little bit. So down at the bottom, where you have your one half inch score, I'm going to cut out those three squares by cutting right above the score line, all three of them up to that score. And then I'm gonna cut at an angle like so. So this is what I cut out and this is what it looks like. Okay, do the same thing to the other side. I'm going to cut it at an angle and I'm going to cut those three squares out right above the score line. And that's what that side looks like. So we're going to fold in the sides and then put the bottom up and then we're going to attach this as the top flap. Okay. So let's do that. Here is my base page. Let me make sure I have it going the right way. Yep. All right. So we're going to line this up with the bottom and we're going to put glue on the one, this bottom, this one half inch piece. Come on glue, you're stuck. There we go. One a little bit of glitter glue there on this one half inch piece and on the bottom one half inch, the long side. Dang, I keep messing up on the glue. Okay, I put the sides in and then I bring up the bottom. Move my fingers a little bit. And I'm going to attach that to the bottom of my page, lining it up, making sure the sides line up also, and it doesn't, so i got to move quickly with this glue. There we go. And press down, let it have a second to dry. If you want, you can get your bone folder and give it a good press. Make sure it's on there good. Remember, you're making two of these, so when you cut out your 4 by 9 you would cut out two 4 by 9s one for the top section and one for the bottom section on the hinge. Okay, So now, 
We're going to take our three by six piece that we scored at one half that we rounded the corners and we're just going to attach that at the top. I got glue on my finger. And these pages go pretty fast. And even we have some flips and some pockets, but we're not going crazy on this one. Press down and I'm going to open it up, make sure it's down and that there's no excess glue. And if there is, I'm going to get rid of it. And I have just a little piece here that I'm going to trim. Does it? Obviously I didn't line. Oops. I can barely see it. Okay. And that is page two. Now to keep this closed, you can decide what kind of closure you want. Maybe you want a brad on the top and the bottom where you wrap around uh, maybe a piece of string or ribbon. Um, you can use a magnet. Um, you could do a flap. Uh, using paper and then it tucks into something down here. Uh, I'll probably do a magnet here and a magnet here to keep it closed. Okay, that is base page two. Two down, two to go. So base, um, let me change my notes here, page three. Again, you're going to be making uh, two of these. One for the top, one for the bottom. You're probably tired of hearing me say that. So then we're on page three, style three, okay? So um, on the front, we have a flap that opens to the right, okay? And then we have a flap that goes up and a flap that goes down. And that's it. Is that right? Up, down, yeah, that's it so that we have plenty of room for uh, pictures, larger pictures. And on the other side, when you turn it over, it's a double pocket. Uh, let's get started. Let's get our base pages. We need one six by six that we scored at a half inch on each side, and we need one five by six. And we're gonna go ahead and remove little corner of each side of the score tape so we can line it up and if we have to adjust it it'll be easier to lift. Press down on the two sides. And that looks pretty good. Press. Okay, so third base page. Turn it so that the openings are to the left and to the right. Um, you are going to need a five by six and a half inch. Five by six and a half. Let me make sure this is the right one. Five by six and a half. Yep, five by six and a half. You're going to place the six and a half inch side on your scoreboard score it one half. I rounded the corners and I mitered the corners on that one half inch side. Okay, one of those, actually you're gonna want two, one for each of the, uh, you're making two of this style. And then you need a flap that goes up and down and those measure four and a half by five and seven eighths. Four and a half by five and seven eighths. We're going to place the four and a half inch side in our scoreboard. Yep, four and a half. And score it one half on both of them. Round the corners. So you should have two of those. Okay. And we are going to first attach, let's do. Let's attach this one first. So this is your larger piece. This is the one that was five by six and a half that we scored at a half, mitered corners, rounded corners. Put glue on. I keep letting my glue sit for just a second and then it gets clogged on me. Clean out that top. That's why I like this thin tip because it comes with a pin and it's just real easy to open it back up again. 
Okay. I'm going to turn this sideways so I can line it up. I'm putting this on the right hand side. Line it up at the edge. When you lay it down, make sure it lines up nice and neat. And press. I'm going to open it up to make sure I don't have any excess glue and then that's down real well. Okay, I'm going to keep this in the open position and now we're going to adhere a flap on the top and one at the bottom. So these pieces were the ones that were four and a half by five and seven eighths. And the reason why it's five and seven eighths instead of six is so that it can close without uh, having a problem. Now, because I have rounded corners, um, I'm going to have to round when I attach this. I don't want that squared, so I'm going to have to round this uh, corner on my right. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and put glue on that one half inch strip. and place that at the bottom, lining it up with that rounded corner. Make sure it lines up on the side. Press. Open it, make sure it's down real well, get rid of excess glue. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to adhere now the flap to the top. I'm going to turn this upside down so it's easier for me. Now, I do need to round this corner so that it lines up. And I'll put glue. These pages go by fast. Once you have all the pieces cut, there's nothing really tricky. This could be beginner. It could be medium skill, upper skill. It's kind of how you decorate it that really adds a lot of the advanced, I mean makes it look much more advanced than it is. Okay, press down. So I open my flap to the right and I have a flap that goes up and down. Again you're going to have to decide on your closure do you want a magnet or do you want uh, something else to keep those closed? I've been using magnets. Um, you could do some sort of uh, tag or picture from the collection and not, just glue it at the bottom and then kind of tuck this inside of it. You can decide how you want it to stay closed. So that's the front. I'm going to turn it over onto the back and this is where we're going to have layered pockets. So let me give you the measurements for those. Uh, you need one that is two by seven, two inches by seven inches. Once you have, you're gonna cut two of those because you're gonna make two pages like this. Um, you're gonna score it one half with this seven inch side across uh, the top of your scoreboard. Half on one side, turn it around, half again. I did miter the top corners, and if you want, you can miter the bottom, but that it's not gonna a problem if you don't. I just did the top. The next one is going to be three by seven, three inches by seven inches. Now this one we're going to score on three sides because it's going to be the bottom pocket. We don't want anything to fall out the bottom. So you're going to score at one half inch on each side of the, when it's at the seven inch side on your uh, scoreboard half on each, turn it, and do a half on the long side. I'm going to go ahead and miter the top of these. I'm going to score, or I'm going to burnish my score lines. Can't get that little piece of paper. There we go. Okay. I cut out that bottom square at an angle to get rid of bulk on each of those bottom corners. And this is going to be the, pay, uh, the pocket that goes at the bottom because we scored the bottom so nothing could fall out. And then this one is going to be 
tucked down underneath of it. So what I do is I kind of eyeball it as to where I want it. So I'm going to tuck this down and I want this pocket to stop here. So I'm going to get a pencil and I'm just going to put a little line so I know where to line that up. Okay. So I just put a little line so I know that's going to be the top of where I put that pocket. So I'm going to start with the two by seven that we folded just on the ends and I'm going to place that down right where that little pencil mark was. Glue on both sides on the flaps. Uh. And put it at that line. Make sure it lines up on each of the sides. And perfect. Press down. I haven't been using my phone folder much, but you can definitely be doing that. Okay, this one's going to be placed on top of that one, like so. And put glue on the three half inch folds. I fold in the two sides, bring up the bottom, place it on the bottom of my base page, line it up on the bottom and the sides, and voila, press down. So by not putting a bottom on that first pocket, now you can put something longer in there because it goes all the way down. It's not just a little tiny pocket. You can go all the way to the bottom. And then this one obviously is shorter, okay? And that is page three or style three. And you need two of those. One for the top, one for the bottom. And now we are ready for the fourth style. So let's do our last base page, our last six by six um, that we scored at half inch on each side. I'm going to remove a little piece of my score tape on each end or each bottom. Take my 5x6, lay it on top, lining it up as perfect as we can to line up bottom, sides, and top. And that's not going to work because it's stuck to my finger. Okay, again, oh, I need to trim a little piece. I see something hanging off here. Can't live with that. Good. All right, opening to the left and the right. So let me show you page style four. And let's see, front, back, pocket, flaps. And okay. All right, so here's page style four. So we're going to be able to lift this and it's going to come out. Okay, and on the other side, we have flaps that go up and down and a pocket here. Okay, again, easy, easy. Let's go ahead and give you the dement or the paper measurements for the front. You need a piece that is four by four. Yep, four by four. And you're going to score it one half inch, round your corners. The second piece you need is four by five. four by five. Huh, I forgot to round this corner. Um, you're going to score it one half on, put the four inch side at the top and score it one half. 
I mitered the corners after I burnished and you're going to want to round your corners. <laughs> Both of them, not just one. Okay. So you're going to place one on the base and then the smaller piece is going to be attached like so. So let me attach the 4x4 four four to the 5x4 four first. So we're going to put glue on our half inch and we're going to glue it on the side that does not have the round, the ones that have the rounded corners. Spit it out. Okay, rounded corners. I'm going to glue to that side so that it opens. Okay. Come on, glue. There we go. Rounded sides are where I'm going to, I'm going to center it because it's a smaller piece. So you need about a half an inch at the top and the bottom. That's not even, there we go. Press down. I'm going to open it up, make sure that there's no excess glue. And I see a little bit of overhang right here, so I'm going to trim just a hair. Darn it. Okay. And now we're going to adhere the one half inch from the larger piece on the right hand side. I think it goes much faster when you use glue than score tape too. I'm going to turn this sideways just so it's easier for me to line up. Um, the opening would be at the right side again. And press down. I'm going to open it, make sure it's down and that there's no excess glue. And you're going to want to decide how you're going to close. Now, if you use magnets, you know, you got to put the magnets on before you put your decorative paper on. Um, oops, got a little glue right there. It'll be covered up anyway. So if you want this to stay down, you can put a magnet here and here. Um, you might have a magnet that you put here and here. If it's a strong enough magnet, if you put it on the top flap and the bottom, it might keep it shut. You'll just kind of have to play around with it depending on how strong your magnets are. Okay. And flip it over onto the back. And on the back, we're going to have a flap that goes up and down. And I put holes to remind me that I want to put grommets. Is that the word? Uh, with enclose it with ribbon. And then there's a pocket here. So let's do that. Let me give you the measurements for the pocket. The pocket measures two and a half by seven, and you're going to make two of this style. So you probably want to cut out two at the same time, two and a half by seven. You're going to place the seven inch side on your scoreboard, score it one half inch on three sides. So one of the long sides will not be scored. You're going to miter the corner after you burnish. And again, at the bottom, I cut out the bottom square by cutting them out at an angle. That's your pocket. The two flaps, you're going to uh, end up cutting four of these, and these are three by six. Yep, three by six. You're going to place the three inch side on your scoreboard, score at one half. Same with the other one, place the three inch side at the top, score at a half. I rounded my corners on both of those. And I put the hole to remind me, you don't have to do that if you don't want to. I have a bad memory. I have a big birthday coming. It's a major milestone. So the memory is not as good as it used to be. Okay, so I'm going to do the pocket first. So I'm going to um, gotta make sure I have this right. Yep. I'm going to put glue on the half inch sides. And that long piece. And I'm going to fold in the sides and then the bottom up on top of it, of the sides. Attach to the bottom. 
Make sure everything's lined up nice and neat. Press down. Okay. Our flaps are going to go up and down, so I'm going to do the bottom one first. Line it up with the bottom and the sides to make sure you've got everything nice and neat. And perfect. Press down. You got it. You're going to open it. Make sure it's down and that there's no excess glue. I'm going to turn it upside down so I can line it up easier and do the other, pay, uh, the other flap. Line it up at the other end, and they should meet in the center. And there you go. So we have our pages made. We did two of each, or I had one done ahead of time. You have to still make another one. And so you should have a total of eight pages. Okay, so I'm going to mat these. Matting can get very boring to watch. So what I do is I just measure each of the things I'm covering and I go in by a fourth of an inch. So if I were to measure, and most of you know this, but if you're new at it, um, if this measures four inches, I would cut to three and three fourths and it measures three and a half across. So I would cut out three and a fourth, okay? So I just go one half, or excuse me, one fourth of an inch smaller than the paper. Okay, so it is time to cover my pages with the Garden Life by Blue Fern. And then I'll come back and show you, uh, talk to you a little bit about the hinge. Since I've shown you how to uh, make the base pages, I went through and I matted everything and did my decorating. Um, so I put them in the order that I think I want them in the book and I only Basically, I only added embellishments to the front and to the back um, Because on the inside you don't want um, There to be any bulk so that it doesn't close right uh, Every once in a while I would put a saying in there, but for the most part the inside is plain I still need to add my seam binding to where I have punched my holes and put the um, grommets, brads, nope, the grommets, I don't know what they're called, uh, I can't remember. Uh, so I'll put seam binding here, so that will also give it some bulk. So um, I'll just show you real quick some of the things I did to decorate. Just added some ribbon and trim and added the word dream here. On the back I had some real pretty lace, um, hold on, see if I can make that a little bit more clear. There we go. Uh, I had some really pretty lace and it, um, I cut it up and used it on the corner. And then I just put a silver binding with a rose in the center to open it up. Um, on some I did it even more simpler, more simple, excuse me, bad English. Um, just ribbon here and then I have a saying inside. And I didn't glue it all the way down on a lot of these so that you could use it as a tuck spot. Here I just took a little piece of this fencing that I have and added some flowers. This is a, from the chipboard uh, collection that goes with it. And let's see, what else do I have here? This one, um, I wanted most of it for a picture so I just did cut out something. I had some dye that I bought and went to put it through my um, cut emboss and cut that out and then put a, a dragonfly metal piece on there and then on this side um, I did this the same thing on the other uh, page on this two pocket page I just trimmed it with flat back pearls and then here I have a little bundle of flowers and they're real small okay so these are going to be my bottom pages in my book and then my top pages 
Again, I cut something out with my cut emboss using a die. I have this spray of pearls and then a flower. I don't think I put anything inside. Yep, this one's plain. Um, on the back, there's the flat back pearls. I didn't put the cluster of flowers on that one. I'll have to add my seam binding to this one. And of course, I didn't punch those evenly. So hopefully when I put the seam binding in, it'll kind of cover that up. And just went in and matted everything. This is Nature's Playground again. Um, it's open so that you can tuck something underneath. On the back, just added that flower trim um, and a butterfly. Another one of the pieces of from the lace to so the ribbon I have, cut it off. Here's some trim with some flowers. And then I have my magnets strategically placed so that it'll stay closed. I have to add seam binding here. And then the last one, um, added some trim, a die cut, a couple flowers in the corner and then a magnet to keep it closed and then um, some trim with uh, flat back pearls. Okay, so that's how I did mine. Love this paper, so no matter what you do with it, it's going to turn out beautiful. Uh, so those are already ready to go. I've already arranged them in the order that I want them for the top and the bottom. Let me talk to you a little bit about the cover. Um, to make this cover, uh, you're going to need two pieces of chipboard that are six and a half by 11, and that's for the front and the back. Those were six and a half across and 11 up and down. And then my spine is three by 11. Okay. Um, for those of you who don't know how to do the covers, there are tons of videos out there. I just put mine together to save time. Um, the one thing is because this is 11 inches long, when you wrap your paper over, you only have a one inch border of your um, paper so you have to make sure you line it up real carefully um, and then I matted the two sides I put the same color of paper the artisan cardstock in the middle where the hinge is going to be but then I added some decorative paper on the sides so I still have to do my cover and decorate that I'm gonna put my hinge in and then attach my pages I'm gonna look for some sort of doily to put here and then maybe I'll put um, a bird or I don't know maybe try and find a little nest or something but I'd like to have doilies to hold things on the side um, I'm a doily person so um, what I want to show you now is the hinge and I'm gonna do mine a little bit different instead of making two separate hinges I'm gonna make one hinge and then I have a heavy-duty cutter so I'm just gonna cut it in half so the pages are five inches long, so you want to go one eighth inch shorter than that. Some people do it the same length as, or the yeah, the same length as the page. So five inches, and they just cut tabs on the side. They kind of miter the ends. Um, I like the idea of doing it just one eighth of an inch shorter, not tr uh, mitering the ends and just uh, slipping it on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the hinge as one piece. And then I'm going to cut it in half. So um, you're going to need a piece of paper that is um, nine and three fourths, and I left it at twelve. And we might have to trim some of that, but that's okay. So it's nine and three fourths. So if you divide nine and three fourths by two, um, that is going to give us four and seven eighths. So each of the hinges will be four and seven eighths inches long if you want to do them separately. Okay. So um, I'm going to show you how I would. Um, do my scoring. I want to give myself a little bit of room on the left hand side that I can fold under and then whatever's left over here I'm going to fold under. I don't have the wings on the side of my hinges. I wrap them around. Um, it's probably hard to see the numbers so I'll zoom in if that helps. And let's see here. Ooh. I think that's better. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at one and one fourth and score and then I'm going to score at one and a half. Okay, So that's going to give me a one fourth inch um, edge so it won't go straight in. You'll have a little uh, one fourth inch and then you'll have the hinge. 
Now I like my gussets to be a half an inch because I uh, usually have some pretty thick pieces on here. Like this flower is pretty thick and so I don't want it to get smashed. Some people do a 1 4th inch gusset, some people do 3 8 Mine's going to be a half, so it makes it easy to score. So every, you're going to do 2 half inches, that'll be the hinge, and then you're going to do a half inch for the gusset. So I'm going to score, I already scored at 1 and 1 4th and 1 and a half. So I'm going to start at 2, then 2 and a half, and those two are going to be a hinge. And then I'm going to go to three, and that's going to be my gusset. So go to three and a half and four, that's going to be a hinge. The next half inch at four and a half, that's a gusset. Go to um, five and five and a half, those two will make a hinge. Go to six inches, that will make a gusset. Okay. Um, six and a half and seven. I gotta count now. Um, hinge, space, hinge, space, hinge, space, hinge. Okay, so I'm gonna stop at seven. Now I want that one fourth inch border just like we had over here. So after seven, I'm gonna go to seven and one fourth. Okay, now I'm gonna have to trim some of this off. Okay. Um, and now I'm going to do my uh, scoring. I'm going to burnish my score marks and then I'll uh, come back and show you what it looks like after I've scored it. I'm also going to link a video for hinges um, just to save my, some time. You can go look at, um, if you already know how to make a hinge, super. If you don't, I'm going to link a great tutorial for you. So I'll be right back. I'm going to do some prep work. I went ahead and prepped my um, hinge. And so this is what it looks like because I wrapped the excess uh, around to the back. Um, I went ahead and I placed my 1 4th inch score tape along the top of each side of each hinge. And I try and go as close to the top as possible so that the um, pages will turn easier. Um, so get your score tape as close to the top as you can. So I put it on the front and back of each hinge. Okay. I kind of worked with it a little bit, pressing down uh, each direction and making sure that it was burnished real well. Uh, normally then I would have my um, score tape on the back and then glue it onto my book. But I want to cut this in half first. And so like I said, I have a heavy duty cutter. So I'm going to cut this in half so that it's four and seven eighths on each side. And then I'm going to go and put my adhesive on the back. Okay. So let me get my cutter ready. I'll be right back. I need four and seven eighths. I cut my hinge into two equal pieces of four and seven eighths and four and seven eighths. Um, like I said, I have a heavy duty cutter and so that helped. If you don't have a really uh, like industrial strength cutter, you might want to make your hinges separate. Um, I put adhesive on the back and then I measured a half inch down from the top to place the top hinges. And then I measured a half inch up from the bottom and placed those hinges and you will have a little space in between, which is what you want. Okay. Um, now to put the pages on, I'm going to do the top pages first and on each page you have that opening that we're going to slide onto the hinge. Um, I didn't make any um, inserts for my pockets. Um, I have to check to see how much paper I have left over. But as of right now those are empty. But if you have enough paper you can um, put things off to the side or in that side pocket. All right, so to make sure that I get them on evenly, because I have learned the hard way and thanks to a lot of people's advice and practice, I know not to take all the score tape off at once. We're going to take a little bit off on each side and fold it. So I tore, uh, pulled back a little piece and I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to put a little, tear a little piece back and I'm going to place my page on and make sure it is on there where I want it. And I'm going to kind of push to the side to make sure 
it can lean over and I think that's where I want it so I'm going to finish pulling adhesive there and I'm going to finish pulling off the adhesive on this side and I'm going to give it a good push to make sure that it's on there real sturdy okay so there's page one and again it'll open flap here and flap there okay um, you can either decide to do the rest of the top ones and then go down to the bottom. You can do the first one at the top and then go down and do the first one at the bottom. It's up to you. Um, but whatever you do, I would take a little bit of your score tape off at once and then make sure it's on there the way you want it before you pull the rest off. So I'm going to finish putting, here I'll do one more. I'll do the bottom one. Okay, so you can see what, it, there's a bad shadow. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of the score tape. Maybe pull it back just a little bit. Pull this side off just a little bit. My fingernails aren't working. For Pete's sake. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Okay, so you can see I have two little flaps of score tape backing. I'm going to find the opening and place that on the hinge where I want it. I'm going to push to the side to make sure it lays down. These don't bump. And I like it. I'm going to take the rest of the score tape off of the backing. and push it together. Alright, so I'm going to finish putting my pages on and I'll finish decorating the front and then my book will be done and I'll show a still photo at the end. Alright, thank you! Okay, I decided to come back one more time before I uh, finish up. I went ahead and put um, a seam binding. I'm going to tie it closed. And so I put the, I laid the seam binding down all the way across the front and the back and the spine. And then I placed my decorative paper on. Uh, I still have to decorate my front cover. And I'm still looking for things on the inside. But I did want to show you what it looked like once all the pages were in. It's really hard to get the whole book in because it's 11 inches. Let me see if I can move this up. That's as good as it's going to get. Uh, I'm not going to open all the flaps and everything, but I just kind of wanted to walk you through what it would look like. Um, here's the first page on the bottom and the top. And then we have the left. And this is what the right hand side looks like. With everything that opens and up the double pages here. Um, turn each page. This is what it looks like on the left and on the right. I thought these were the same pages at first, but they're not. They're different. This one goes out this way, and it's closed with a magnet, and this is a pocket. It still opens, but they're different. And the last pages. This is the left and the right. And the back last page all right uh, i'm going to finish up decorating doing the inside front cover and back cover um, just something simple probably add some chipboard pieces uh, here and there and then i will be done all right if you have any questions or comments or helpful hints or uh, if you need some ideas uh, on how to do something or if something's not working for you uh, go ahead and leave a comment if you haven't subscribed, please do so, um, and you can go to countrycraftcreations.com if you are interested in purchasing any of the things that I have shown you. Have a good one.